Hello and welcome. You're taking a look through the Steiner T5XI 5-25 with the SCR reticle. I said I was going to get this video out sooner than I did, and I sincerely apologize. I actually completely forgot that I didn't do this, so yeah, my bad. Anyway, as we take it up to 25x, its maximum magnification, you're going to see that here, its eye box and brightness doesn't really change all that much. It's a good performance to start off with, but unfortunately, as you'll see very soon, um, it greatly diminishes. Now, as far as the SCR reticle goes, for me personally, I really like it. It's very simple, easy to read, and has everything that I need for ranging. The illumination is also really nice as well. Here at maximum brightness, you can see just how much of it gets illuminated. Keep in mind, this is at 25x, so at anything lower, it's going to be a lot smaller, like you'll see. But you do notice it during the daytime, which is impressive. There aren't many large magnification scopes like this that have daytime bright illumination. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be blinding you or anything like that, but you do pick it up. And that means when you actually do need to use it, like, for example, in the middle of a rainstorm or something like that, you're going to have plenty of brightness there to be able to use it properly. Zooming back out to 5x, and you can see just how small it gets, but the illumination still has it be able to be picked up fairly well. Granted, I don't think you ever shoot this in 5x at night with illumination on, but there you have it. So next the thing to go into is tracking test. Now, the one thing about the scope is it goes down to only 50 meters on the parallax, and this target is roughly 33 yards away, so this is as good as it's going to get. For this tracking test, we're going to be going up and to the right. So what I'm going to do is stop talking and let the video audio take over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, whoa, 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 sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 30. Perfect. Let's go up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, so let's go down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six, seven, eight. Gotta click off. All in all, not a terrible tracking performance, especially considering I could barely see the damn target. We now move on to our 400 yard, 80 inch tall steel door. You will note that the trees are green. That is because I had first filmed this scope during the start of COVID last year. So this is probably about May, May, June, somewhere around there. Zooming all the way into 25X, and before we start playing with the parallax, I play with the illumination, which, as you can see, is noticeable. And this is a picture-perfect bright day. Like I was saying earlier, the illumination on this leaves no one wanting for anything. Now, here's where this scope's particular problem started to come about. I'm over here adjusting the parallax, and I usually do this first by looking at the number on the dial itself and getting that close to see if the image actually looks like it should be, you know, set up for that distance. And this is about 400 yards. So that's about, what, 360 meters? I put it on 360, and it's about there. And it just doesn't look right at all. In fact, Nothing about this looks right. Even when I finally get it as close to where I can get it, which is right about now, I think it was reading about 70 meters on the parallax knob. Now, that makes no sense in any way, shape, or form. I even back it out a little bit to about 20x to see if it gets a little bit better, and it really doesn't do a whole lot. And this right here is the problem I was having that made me send this over to Steiner to have him check it out and see what was wrong with it, because I knew something was wrong with it. Not only does the parallax not match up anywhere near close to what actual focus is, it just doesn't look all that sharp to me. It looks dull, it looks blurry, the colors seem slightly off. Granted, this is the middle of the day, end of the spring, and yeah, it's probably a little haze to the air, but 
it didn't seem right. And for the rest of this video, it doesn't seem all that right either. Now we focus our attention on multiple different distances. Those power cables are about 30 yards away, which this scope shouldn't technically be able to focus to. The tree line is roughly 200, and that power tower all the way out in the distance is roughly 800. You can still see the illumination is on, which is impressive again for a scope like this. A lot of the larger magnification scopes just don't get that bright. We try focusing down onto those power cables again at around 30 yards, which doesn't really do all that well. Then we focus a little bit on the trees, which comes out okay. You can see some chromatic aberration coming up on the high contrast areas against the sky. And then we try to focus on that tower all the way off in the distance. Again, that's roughly 800 yards, which is a pretty long ways away. But again, it just seems a little soft. Even when I back out the magnification from 25x to around 20 or so, it still seems a little bit soft. And then once I back it out, I start adjusting the parallax a little bit to see if maybe I can get it better. Maybe I'm just trying to ask too much of the scope, but when I'm spending a little bit more than $2,000 on something, I want it to perform perfectly, not just mediocrely. Just like the Kala SK-18i that Scott had sent in, I was not impressed by that whatsoever, and the same goes for this. We fast forward several months into the future. This is shortly after Steiner had sent this scope back to me after checking on the parallax like I had asked them to. And once again, I am adjusting the parallax to roughly what the distance should be. Again, around 360-ish meters or so. And when I zoom in, that's what I got. Again, it was still off. Now, yeah, you would say, okay, but it's only a dial. But it's not the point. The point is, this should not be an issue. Granted, if it's off 10, 15, hell, even 20%, you know, it's still mostly on. This was reading around 75 meters when I finally got it in focus. And that is just plain ignorance on Steiner's part to say, oh, well, yeah, this is fine. We found nothing wrong with it. So how did Steiner really do? Not all too well, in my opinion. But yet, I still like them as a company. I know it's it's a love-hate relationship I have with them. Is it something that I could fully endorse and tell you, hey, look, this is great, go deal with it? No. No, I cannot. Needless to say, I wasn't feeling overly enthusiastic with how Steiner left me after the scope came back to me. But you can watch my warranty video on that. Anyway, finally got it in focus. If I remember correctly, the parallax knob was reading around 75 meters. And the image doesn't look terrible, but it just looks really flat. You could see a lot of chromatic aberration on top of the parapet wall right there, and on top of the brick wall just above the, the door frame. We now shift our attention to the 900 to 1,000 yard window. This is still after I had gotten it back from Steiner when they said, eh, everything's fine. So we will keep that in mind. Again, the perfect parallax for this was reading around 200 or so meters, when in actuality it's closer to around 800 to 900. But anyway, I get it as sharp as I can get it, which honestly, isn't terrible, all things considered. But again, the image is just very, very flat. Nothing pops, all the colors seem muted, and it's just, it's not, it's nothing special. And again, for around two grand plus, it should be. I add about 10 mils of elevation to see if that's gonna change how this image quality is going to look. And honestly, not really. It's a decent performance in that regard, whereas you could add elevation to it and it's not gonna really change how the image looks. But unfortunately, it doesn't make it look any better. It just doesn't make it look any worse. I didn't bother putting the illumination on here because you'd still be able to see it as we've seen before. So that's basically going to conclude this little section. All right, on to something more exciting. Now, usually I would incorporate some of my small bore action, but that's limited to 50 yards. And this is a minimum parallax of 50 meters, which means that I can't really use it there all too effectively. Nevertheless, here we are looking at a 100 yard paper target. Now I try to get the parallax just right. You can see some chromatic aberration peeking up through there once it's a little bit off, but once you get it sort of close, it's there. But again, it just looks hazy and, and flat. There's not a lot of color saturation to this glass. And granted, it's a bright, beautiful, sunny day in the end of spring, early summer, and these colors should be popping. An even better representation of how bad this is is right now when I focus on these steel targets at 180 yards and a dirt berm. The steel is really hard to pick up when you're at 25x magnification. Same goes with this plate. 
And the difference between this plate is there's a lot of detail to the face that from all the damage it's got. Other scopes pick it up significantly better than that. Panning over, we get to the 200-yard paper targets. And again, it's just, it's nothing to write home about. It's good enough. Good enough is acceptable on a three or $400 scope. But when you're spending two to three grand on something, it better be absolutely perfect. And this is just not doing that for me. Illumination, as you can see, is plenty bright. I did have to change a couple of camera settings to pick up the targets a little bit but that was only because they were in heavy shadow. There isn't much else to really talk about before getting into my final thoughts. So enjoy me spotting for my friend N shooting his CC-457 at the steel target on the right. If you have a keen eye, you could actually notice the 22 drop from around the 11 o'clock position to hit the target. Hit. Hit. I think you hit the wooden post. Hit. Hit. It's done. With everything being said, I'm actually kind of impressed with how well I was able to spot that through my camera through the scope at 300 yards. But with that, let's get into my final thoughts. Well, there you have it. The Steiner T5 XI 5-25. I have to say I'm slightly disappointed in this thing. I was expecting better, especially for when you consider the price of this thing. These typically go for around $2,000, and that's a lot of money. I didn't pay for that much for this, granted, but knowing the fact that these are still that much originally, it leaves some to be desired. By now you've already seen the Steiner warranty video about the Parallax, I've talked about it on Infernatum. There's just, it doesn't feel great, both to turn and visually looking through it. And that's what's so disappointing. When I sent this in, I was kind of hoping that they would say, hey, yeah, you know, there is something a little funky with it. We're going to fix it, take care of it. And then I was hoping this would come back and this parallax knob would be perfect. You know, you set it to 200 and 200 meters, and then it's actually, you know, properly 180 yards. You're like, okay, awesome. It's great. It's great. But it's not. I was really excited to get my hands on this several months ago when I bought it. And I was really hoping that this would be like oh, my, my personal first entry into that top tier echelon high magnification scope unfortunately it left me feeling flat it, it 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 breaks my heart because it's so close to being freaking perfect the eye box on this thing is wide open it's at five, below 20x it's really big and bright it's awesome the illumination itself daytime bright it's great i really like the scr reticle the turrets are awesome it tracks great it, it's even super lightweight. I mean, yeah, I say super lightweight, but to give you a comparison, this 5 to 25, as you see before you, is 33 ounces. Yeah, there are lighter options out there, but then you got something like this, this 3 to 18 Razer HD, and, you know, it's as near as makes no difference, 17 and a half ounces heavier. That is a complete other optic on top of this one. But weight is only one aspect of many different things on a checklist. I personally am not too much of a fan of this, despite everything else. Whereas with the Razer HD, yeah, I might not like how heavy it is, but everything else is literally picture perfect. And that's why um, I'm actually probably going to be getting rid of this. But all is not lost yet because I do plan on getting my hands on the 3 to 15 version of this, which I think in this package with, with everything being very similar, uh, hopefully with the exception of the parallax adjustment, hopefully the parallax on that will be better, but it's gonna be the magnification that I like a little bit more and it should be super lightweight. So I'm very excited to get my hands on one of those soon, but for right now, I can't say I really recommend this unless this is something that you want, even with the slight optical discrepancies. I think if you're looking for something like this, look elsewhere. Or if you're looking for something that's else that's really lightweight but a little bit more money, the Razer HD AMG, which is even lighter than this, I think, and roughly the same magnification. So, you know, you see the name, you see that this is made in the U.S. on their website, and you're like, oh, yeah, this is everything I want. And it's just, it leaves you feeling blah. Anyway, 
that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. See you again next time. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you, this wouldn't be possible.